Sometimes life is stranger than fiction. From a woman who won the lottery four times to a soldier who saved Hitler's life, the world is filled with unbelievable stories that defy all logic and coincidence. So today, we are taking a close look at how the universe surprises us. Here are six stories you won't believe are true. At number one, we have one of the most unbelievable moments in history. On September 28, 1918, during World War I, a British soldier named Henry Tandy made a decision that would go down in infamy. It happened during the Fifth Battle of Ypres, near the French village of Marcoing. Tandy was a brave soldier known for his courage and had earned several medals, including the Victoria Cross. He was the most decorated British private of the war, but one choice would forever change his legacy. As the battle raged on, Tandy found himself face to face with a wounded German soldier. The man was limping across no man's land, clearly injured and no threat to anyone. Tandy raised his rifle, but instead of firing, he lowered his weapon. He let the soldier go. That small act of mercy seemed like a simple moment of compassion in the chaos of war. But years later, this story would take a shocking turn. British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain visited Germany in 1938 and was shown a painting of Tandy carrying a wounded comrade. It was then that Adolf Hitler allegedly revealed that he had been that wounded German soldier whom Tandy had spared. That man came so near to killing me that I thought I should never see Germany again, the Nazi dictator allegedly told Chamberlain. As Hitler put it, the soldier had pointed his gun at him but spared him at the last moment. The man Tandy chose not to shoot had risen to power and become one of history's most notorious figures. His compassion on that fateful day may have altered the course of world history forever. You probably know Fat Tony as the infamous head of the Springfield Mafia on The Simpsons, but what if I told you he was based off a real mobster? Anthony Fat Tony Salerno, the notorious Mafia boss, hit his peak in the 1980s, just before the show debuted. He operated out of New York City and was involved in various criminal activities, from loan sharking to gambling. For many years, the FBI kept a close eye on Salerno, believing he was the boss of his crime family. However, investigations later revealed that he was actually a front for the real boss, Vincent the Chin Gigante. While his exact position in the Mafia hierarchy was unclear, Fat Tony was definitely a significant player in organized crime. He managed operations that included running numbers and even backing high-profile professional fighters, showcasing his influence in the underworld. Salerno was known for his tough demeanor and charismatic personality, which made him a fitting inspiration for the character in The Simpsons. Inspired by movies such as The Godfather and Goodfellas, the show's Fat Tony embodies classic mafia stereotypes, but with a humorous twist. Despite being a criminal, the character became a fan favorite, reflecting both the absurdity and charm of mafia life. In 1986, Salerno was convicted during the Mafia Commission trial and received a hefty sentence of 100 years in prison. Salerno spent his last years in prison, where he died of a stroke in 1992. Imagine you're on a beach in Thailand, soaking up the sun and enjoying the gentle sound of the waves. Suddenly, a 10-year-old girl starts screaming that there's going to be a tsunami. Panic ripples through the crowd as beachgoers look around in confusion. This was the reality for those on that fateful day in 1995. Tilly Smith, a nine-year-old girl from England, was enjoying a family vacation when she noticed unusual signs in the ocean. Having learned about tsunamis in her school lessons just weeks prior, she recognized the telltale signs, the sudden withdrawal of water and the peculiar behavior of the sea. Tilly rushed to her parents, urging them to take her seriously. At first, they were skeptical, caught up in the relaxed atmosphere of their vacation, but Tilly didn't back down. She insisted they warn the lifeguards and others nearby. Her determination paid off as her parents began to understand the urgency in her voice. Eventually, they alerted the lifeguards, who took action and began evacuating beachgoers to higher ground. Thanks to Tilly's quick thinking and insistence, her family and the 100 other people moved to safety just moments before the tsunami struck into the JW Marriott Phuket Resort and Spa. Penny Smith, Tilly's mother, was one of the last on the beach as a 9-meter wave appeared and started hurtling towards the shore. Referred to around the world as the angel on the beach, Tilly Smith went on to receive many honors for her bravery. She was named Child of the Year by readers of a French children's newspaper, received an award of merit from the UK Marine Society, and met former President Bill Clinton in his capacity as the United Nations Special Envoy for the Tsunami Recovery. Truly a remarkable and unbelievable story. In Chinese culture, the number eight is seen as one of the luckiest numbers. 
This belief comes from how similar the Cantonese word for eight resembles the word for wealth. As a result, the number eight is highly sought after, especially when it comes to vanity license plates. People often pay large sums of money to have eights in their plates, believing it will bring them prosperity and success. A man named Louis from Shanghai, however, took this superstition to a whole new level. He purchased a small modest truck for 30,000 yuan, but the real expense came with the license plate. Louis shelled out a staggering 1 million yuan for a vanity plate with 5 eights, a string of numbers he believed would bring him nothing but good fortune. Unfortunately, luck didn't exactly work in his favor that day. As soon as Louis hit the road with his new plate, he was pulled over repeatedly by local police. They couldn't believe that such an expensive plate could belong to such an ordinary truck, assuming it had to be fake. In a strange twist of fate, Louis ended up getting pulled over a total of eight times that day. It wasn't until word of his story spread to police headquarters that the officers finally stopped flagging him down. Louis' belief in the lucky power of eight may not have brought him wealth, but it certainly brought him attention and an ironic twist of fate. Speaking of luck, some people seem to have an endless supply of it. While Louis in Shanghai spent almost thousands of dollars to have a good luck license plate, a woman in the United States won not just once, but four times in the lottery. We are talking about Joan Ginther, a math professor from Texas who holds one of the most mind-boggling records in lottery history, winning an astonishing four separate times and racking up over $20 million in total. Joan's first big win came in 1993 when she hit the jackpot, taking home $5.4 million. Many would call that a once-in-a-lifetime stroke of luck, but for Joan, it was only the beginning. A decade later, in 2006, she won again, this time claiming $2 million from a scratch-off ticket. As if two wins weren't incredible enough, Joan's luck continued when she hit the jackpot yet again in 2008, this time for $3 million. But the most unbelievable part of her story came in 2010 when she won for the fourth time, netting a staggering $10 million from yet another scratch-off. Statistically, the odds of winning the lottery even once are astronomical. To win four times seems almost impossible. Some have speculated that her background in math might have given her an advantage, but others argue that no amount of skill can account for this level of luck. People have called her the luckiest woman on Earth, and rightfully so. What's more interesting is that Ginther never gave any interviews or discussed her winning strategy. Joan Ginther's story will remain a mystery for years to come. Next, we have a truly unbelievable tale from World War II, the Ghost Army. This top secret unit, officially known as the 23rd Headquarters Special Troops, was created to deceive and mislead enemy forces. Established in 1944, it comprised around 1,100 men, including artists, sound engineers, and inflatable designers. Their mission? To create the illusion of a larger military presence and divert enemy attention away from real troop movements. Imagine an army that doesn't just fight, but plays tricks. The Ghost Army used inflatable tanks, aircraft, and artillery to simulate a powerful fighting force. These props were carefully crafted to withstand enemy aerial reconnaissance, while sound engineers produced realistic audio effects, mimicking troop movements and heavy machinery. By broadcasting these sounds from hidden locations, they fooled the enemy into believing they faced a formidable army. You might think that these theatrics would not have helped during actual combat, and you would be wrong. One of their most jaw-dropping operations took place during the Battle of the Bulge. Using their inflatable equipment and sonic devices, they convinced German forces that a massive contingent of Allied troops was ready to strike, altering enemy troop deployments and buying crucial time for American forces. Who says creativity, innovation, and loopholes can't be a part of warfare? That's all from our side. Which of these stories surprised you the most? Let us know in the comments below.